Hello friends, this is Mowgli again for the fifth session of ARM based development course. Welcome all of you. So, in the last class, we touched upon the three stage pipeline of ARM, which is being used in ARM 70 DMI. And this section, we are going to take a detour from ARM 7 processor, go to understand the five stage pipeline which is being used in ARM 9 family. This, this is to understand the five stage pipeline and then we will come back to ARM 7 to read about its assembly in section set and what are the features that the ARM 7 support. So, only for this session we are touching upon the five stage pipeline which is supported in ARM 9 processor, okay. So, with this session we will be completing the second unit of the course and from the next class onwards we will start with the ARM instruction set. So, the focus of this session is to understand the five stage pipeline of ARM 9 and what are the various stages of the pipeline and uh, what are the pipeline hazards, okay. And then how is it avoided in to some hardware solution which is called data forwarding. So, this will help you to understand five stage pipeline and understand the how it is implemented in ARM. Okay. ARM 9 family was announced in 1997. Because of five stage pipeline, the ARM 9 processor can run at higher clock frequencies than the ARM 7 family. So, I had explained earlier that when the number of stages are increased, you will have minimum work to be done at each stage, which will be taking less clock number of clock cycles because of which we will be able to run the processor at a higher clock rate when we increase this number of stages in the processor. So, the fact that ARM 9 has 5 stages compared to ARM 7, we will be able to run the ARM 9 processor at a higher frequency. The extra stages, stages that are introduced in the ARM 9 processor helps the helps in this performance, we will see how it helps. And once the clock rate, the basic clock rate of the processor has increased, the peripheral and especially the memory which is going to be integrated with the processor should also be able to run at that speed. So, the processor and the memory should also be in a synchronization with its own clock rate. And another change from the ARM 7 family is that this ARM 9 processor is a hardware architecture that means it has got separate data and instruction buses compared to ARM 7 which had a single memory and a single database which is accessing both instruction and data from the memory so which was called one on one architecture. Now, ARM 9 onwards the ARM family followed the hardware architecture that means data and instructions are maintained in two different memories and they are accessed to two different buses so that an instruction access is not blocked because of a data access happening while exhibiting the instruction which is of course load or store instruction. So, this processor ARM9 also has a MMU support that is memory management unit support. So, virtual memory can be supported with the help of operating system running on the processor and the ARM9 has a separate data and instruction stack built into the system. So, the SOC the system on chip built using ARM9 will have a data cache and instruction cache inside the chip apart from MMU. So, this whole thing is called a CPU which the first CPU was ARM920, T means it supports some more and ARM920 follows so has an ARM9 family processor inside with the data and instruction cache and MMU built into okay you by now by now you know the difference between a CPU and a processor, processor is just a core ARM core and the CPU is the processor core along with other 
sub modules uh, which are part of SOC could be a data insertion cache MMU and any co processor that the vendor integrates with the co processor. So, this is the introduction to ARM9. Let us see how ARM9 five stage pipeline differs from the three stage pipeline. So, I have given both for you to understand how they differ. The fetch mode, the fetch stage of both the instruction pipeline are the same, both in ARM3 and and ARM, ARM sorry, ARM three stage pipeline as well as ARM five stage pipeline. But when you come into the decode mode in the five stage pipeline, you see that it it does the same thing like some more to decompressing it that we will not worry about it until we talk about some more. It does the decoding of the instruction and here only registers select one there. that means it uh, in the three stage pipeline all the control signals required for accessing the operand which are mentioned in the instruction are generated here and actually utilized in the execution stage where the operands were read finally before the operations were done and then returned back into the register. So, all these operations reading the operands from the register file and performing operation based on the instruction and then writing the result back everything was happening in this execute stage not state of the three stage pipeline in three stage pipeline. Whereas, here what you see is the reading of operands has been moved to the decode stage ok. So, in the second stage itself the decoding of not only decoding of the register as well as reading the operands also done here. So, you may wonder what is the difference between these two. The difference is that here in the decode stage it only identifies what are the registers to be accessed. It prepares the control signals for that and then it passes on that control signal to this next stage and actual reading happens during this cycle. The reading the operands from the register file happens during this cycle. Whereas, here it not only generates the signals for accessing the operand, it also reads those operands and makes it available to ALU. So, when it moves to the execute stage, the operands have already been accessed from the register file, and in this execution stage, only the operation that needs to be performed by the ALU as well as the barrel shifter is carried out. Now, this is also divided into multiple stages. If you remember in the earlier case in the ARM 7 family, if the memory needs to be accessed, suppose it was executing a, a load or a store instruction, even computing the memory address was done here means if suppose uh, based on the mode of the address, address modes incrementing post index or pre index, some indexing has to be done, then that arithmetic has to be done using the ALU and the address was generated and the memory was accessed and written into the register or it is written from the register to the memory everything was happening here in one cycle ok. Whereas, here what happens is that is split into multiple stages that means, any address arithmetic is done here and actual memory access is happening here and writing back the result is done here. So, that is for the memory access suppose if there is a data processing instruction which does not involve any memory it only does some arithmetic on the registers and then the result has to be written back into register. In the case this cycle there is no work to be done, but it has to wait till the right cycle right it comes to the right stage where the result can be written back into the register file. So, this is a kind of different operations performed at each stage and they all need to be done in synchronization in lockstep with each other and common M clock is driving these stages and between one stage to the other stage the information that is required to be passed on is done and I will explain you how it is done internally. So, this class is only to make you understand what happens inside a pipeline and how it is implemented. We are taking the ARM processor as an example and then we are studying here, but this is the uh, method is, which is being followed in any other uh, instruction pipeline implementation too. But this kind of splitting of the function is though uniform across the rest processor, this is in the it is very specific to the ARM also. There may be some minor changes when you study about other processors. So, you can understand that what you under you know uh, what is given here could be what is being followed in other risk processor also with minor changes to 
operation is done at a different stage. So let us go. I hope you understand the difference between these three stages. Uh, the the difference between these two pipelines. Let me explain some more in detail. So the breaking of infection execution is done, and it is broken down to five components from three. So because of this, the maximum work that needs to be done at each stage has come down. So effectively, we will be able to increase the process because uh, whatever Boolean logic or uh, circuitry that we are going to be having it inside a clock, inside a particular stage, it's not going to be introducing more delays. So we will be able to complete it. Uh, within a with a higher clock rate, so it helps in improving the performance and increasing the clock rate of the processor. This is very important that it is not sufficient if you just increase the clock rate of the processor because within the particular stage, if memory has to be accessed, the memory should also be able to provide the information, the data within the time. So not only memory, if suppose there are other uh, peripherals. Which also run in the clock step with the processor, they should all be operating at the rate, the higher rate. Otherwise, we have to have a, a mechanism within the processor to, to inter interface with the lower rate um, or the slow peripherals. Peripherals we can afford to do that, but if a program is running from a memory and it needs to be accessed, the fetch stage of the pipeline needs to be running at the same speed as the processor. So, the instruction memory and the data memory should all be running at the same speed as processor. And as I mentioned, online family has a separate data and instruction memory. So you can either have separate memories or you can have a unified memory with a separate caches. So both you know uh, effectively improve the performance of the processor, that means reducing the clocks per instruction. The number of clocks that are required effective clocks per instruction execution will come down because of this five stage pipeline. So this is what is done in the ARM 917 okay. Now let us see what is the uh, how does it compare with the typical risk architecture. So this five stage pipeline is called a classical way of implementing a pipeline. So though ARM initially was not designed for a five stage pipeline it Actually, you know, mapping very well. The key difference in the ARM9 is the provision of three source operand read ports and two write ports. If you recall, ARM7 has two read ports in the memory and only one write port for a register file. Okay, that means from the register file, you can have two reads happening as well as uh, one write happening in parallel. Whereas in ARM9, they increased it to one more read port and one more write port. Apart from what you had for address incrementing hardware and the R15 uh, access, okay. for accessing the R15 of RTC, one more read and write ports are there. Apart from that, there are three read ports and two write ports in the register file in ARM9. Whereas classical typical classical processors for have only two read ports and one write port. Okay. So effectively, what you can see because of this is that when an execution here if you remember the five stage pipeline in the decode stage itself the operands are there. I told you that uh, ARM7 was accessing the operands in the execute stage whereas in ARM9 it was accessing the operands in the decode stage itself. So maximum of three operands, three so, uh, registers could be there you know in the same clock cycle. Similarly during that time uh, R15 can also be accessed and written back. Suppose because this needs to be done for every instruction because every pipeline uh, whenever there is a fetch it has to increment the R15. So there should be a separate port so that R15 can be accessed without uh, any hindrance of other source operands being read by the instruction. Okay. Let us see what are the various stages. Though I showed you the in the figure, let us explain that in detail now. Fetch mode which accesses the instructions from the memory and place it in the and when that instruction moves from fetch mode to decode stage, fetch stage to decode stage, what happens? The instruction which was accessed earlier 
cycle moves through the decode stage and the new instruction gets fetched from the memory, which is handled by the fetch stage. Now, when the instruction moves into the decode stage, it has to resolve you know what are the options are being used in the instruction looking at the if you remember 4 bits were reserved for RN and RM and RD that is two operand registers and the uh, you know, destination register. So, based on those values and what kind of operation needs to be performed those registers are read and kept ready in a, a separate uh, invisible program invisible pipeline registers ok. Those operands are not used uh, in this stage it is only accessed and kept to be used in the next execute state. So, this needs to be passed on to the next stage because once this instruction moves from decode stage to the execution stage the pre the next instruction will be fitting you know uh, filling in the decode stage. So, now decode stage will be handling the next instruction whereas, the previous instruction what it has fetched the parameter operands won't be available with the decode stage. So, it has to be moved to the execution stage where actually uh, execution of the instruction happens. So, there should be a way of passing the parameter it is similar to a line of people standing and then they move you know, uh, items from one hand to the other. So, once the instruction moves from one stage to the other stage the next stage can take control of that particular instruction and then takes whatever information is required from the previous stage and handles that and then passes it on to the next stage. So, that is the way this handle inside the hardware. So, in the execute stage what happens based on the operation if barrel shipper needs to be used one operand the RM operand will be operated on and then the ALU does the job within the clock cycle if you remember non overlapping two phase clock cycle and then if it happens to be a load store it has to resolve and find out the memory address using the ALU and then if it is a load of store instruction it has to do a data memory access that means the address computer is input stage is put on the get address buffer and uh, if it uh, it was uh, read then it will put the value also or if it is a write it will wait for the memory to provide the data which is to be written into the register means if it is a uh, store or load based on that either um, both data and address will be thrown out if it was a store if it is a load it will put the data uh, address first and then wait for the memory to provide the data and in the write back stage whatever memory gives there is a you know the value uh, that needs to be stored from the memory I am sorry which has to be loaded from the memory that will be accessed and then put into the register. So, writing back into the register happens in the final stage. Now, what happens suppose you have a instruction called add r 1 comma r 2 comma r 3 what are we trying to do here? we are trying to add R 2 and R 3 and move that result into R 1. Now, how is it done in the pipeline? The instruction first add instruction is the 32 bit instruction which is stored in the memory is fetched by the first stage. In the decode stage it understands that it is a add operation. So, A we use the add operation there is no barrel shipper operation here because it is straight away R 2 and R 3 needs to be added and uh, put into the result. Now, all that information is available when this instruction is getting decoded, but it is not known when finally the result is available and this will be written into the register. So, this information has to be passed on to all the stages so that when this add instruction after some 3 clock cycle when it landed lands here it will know the result is to be written into R 1. So, that is being passed to a intermediate programmer invisible pipeline register. I will explain you, but I thought if here if I make it clear to you later on it will become easier. Now, add instruction it will it has understood that it has to access the parameters from R 2 and R 3. So, it has read the parameter now R 2 and R 3 are already read in this state and then it passes on the values that it has read from R 2 and R 3 as two parameters to the ALU. Now, what does the ALU do? ALU also knows that it has to be add operation so that has to come from there and then it will say that there are no barrel shipper information no uh, operation required. So, it does the addition and then keeps the result. Now, it cannot write into the R1 register because it is only execution stage. So, only in the write back it can do its job. So, it will run through this memory access clock uh, cycle also because it is nothing to do with the memory. So, it just waits for that cycle to get over and then in the write back 
that R1 is written into with by the with the result that is got in the equal state. So it is passed on to two different stages and then finally the result gets written. So this is the way pipeline works. Let us see with it. So this is the typical instruction pipeline uh, execution would have seen. This is interface, uh, this is the instruction fetch mode, decode stage, execute stage, memory address calculation stage or memory access stage, and then writing writing back the result. So if you see at a particular time, there are this is a, suppose you assume this is the instruction at thousand, this is the instruction starting at thousand four because you remember all the instructions occupy four bytes. So if an instruction started at thousand, the next instruction, assuming that there are no branches, it's a sequential instruction which is being executed by the pipeline. So thousand, thousand four, thousand eight, thousand uh, three, and you know uh, thousand e. So this all these instructions are in different stages of the pipeline. So when thousand the instruction at thousand reaches the right back, thousand uh, the instruction which was at thousand four has reached this stage. Similarly, the remaining instruction moves through the pipeline and at the end of five clock cycle, you will see that one instruction gets completed per cycle. So you will see that every instruction coming over the pipeline if there are no other stall or any um, stops in the pipeline. I hope you understand the flow of the pipeline here. Now I told you that an instruction to get executed we have to pass on the information from one stage to the other stage because each stage when it is operating on one instruction it forgets about what it has done with the previous one. So that needs to be passed on through a intermediate register which in the same clock cycle it gets latched and then this does a different operation and this does an operation based on what is coming. Similarly the same stage here the execution stage it takes parameter it is similar to you can know in your programming um, paradigm it could be called as a function you know, functions are executed and parameters are being passed to each function. So every clock this function each of the functions get executed but the parameter which it reads from is from the pipeline register. So as the instruction flow in you get different parameters for every stages and they do according to it and then pass on the result back into the next stage. So now assuming each of the stages takes tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, there are 5 different values, 5 different values which are um, stored there. Now if we know that each stage is taking this many clock cycles or microseconds or nanoseconds, then I told you that in the pipeline all the stages should be in lockstep. Lockstep means they have to operate in synchronous fashion, in you know completely synchronous with each other. That means this cannot complete ahead of this or uh, one of them cannot take more time or less time. So once you know that this is the effective delay of each of the stages based on the circuitry and the um, delays that you have in the logic gates that is used for implementing the function. You have to assume a worst case instruction execution in each of the cases and then compute those values and that should be given as a clock period for each of the stages. So effectively what happens is you, you take the maximum of this time delay and then make it as a clock. So what happens? So every stage would have completed before that maximum delay is happened. So the instructions will flow without any hindrance. Yes, so a new a new instruction is issued every clock cycle, and on every clock cycle, the result of each stage moves into the pipeline register. So this pipeline registers are the invisible registers. They don't have any name like R0, R1, R2. You cannot access them from your assembly program. So when I say invisible, means you don't even know they they exist but they are required for this instruction to be executed through the pipeline and which is used by the hardware inside. And then as I told you the maximum of this delay is used as a clock period for the complete pipeline to be working in sync with each other. Now what does this pipeline register do? They pass on data and control values. What do I mean by data and control values? Data means 
it is what it has understood from the inter intersection echo. Suppose, as I told you in the example, add R1, R2, R3, it, it came to know that R2 and R3 are, are the operands to be used. So, it has accessed that operand here and then it, it has to it has understood that add operation needs to be performed on this operand and there are no barrel shifter operation to be performed and then the result needs to be written into R1. Now, in this information which is available in depot stage needs to be passed on to this right back stage. So, that when the result comes out from the add ALU unit it can be written into R1. So, how does this stage know this instruction was will you know uh, interested in writing the result into R1. So, that needs to be passed on to the pipeline. So, this is the values it will say the destination register chosen was R1. So, R1 will come here then when finally, add result you know lands in this stage it will know that ok the result has to be written into R1 so it will write into the register. Now, what is the control operation? The operation right that needs to be performed is add that is the control information to the AAV because AAV is capable of doing performing any operation or whatever is uh, you know programmed to do. So, that add operation needs to be passed on to this so that it will know that on the two operand values it has passed it is supposed to do a addition ok and then it will pass on the result it will also say that ok this is the value of the result that I have found from adding the R2 and R3 it does not know whether it has added from R2 or R3 So it got two values it has added and then it says this is the value I got and you are supposed to write into R1. Now ok I am um, um, sorry this operand fetch could have been a uh, performance ok it, it is execution stage the inspection decode is done and then it should have been uh, execute stage and then you know, write back and this is the memory and uh, memory execution and then write back happens here ok. This is the address calculation ok and then write back happens here and then the uh, value goes out ok. Now, you see here any data value is recovered in data stages must be propagated to the pipeline register and then most extreme example is RD field that is what I mentioned the RD is R1 in the instruction add instruction that has to come to the write back stage to be written into the register. Now, the pipeline register do the job of passing on these values between stages to the other one ok. Now, now what are the control signals? The control signals are generated in the same way as in the single type power filter which needs to go through the pipeline. Now, take an example in the execute stage what are the control signals possible the add operation or sub the operation or is there any RO or any other rotate operation anything that needs to be performed has to be passed on. And then what are the sources of ALU um, where the values are actually the actual value itself is passed here ok. And then in memory whether it is a read or write and which memory access uh, address has to be used for and it could be even PC source also because if it is a branch instruction the new address from where the instruction needs to be active is passed on here. So, it could be a source um, address for the program counter. Now, what happens in the write back whether it is a register file or memory to register whether register to memory or memory to register or it is a register destination whether it is a simple add operation and needs to be written into R1. So, at various stages different control signals are passed on based on the instruction which was decoded in the ID stage ok. So, that falls through the different stages of the pipeline and then they get executed. So, this is a way control signals are passed on for the later stages to use them ok. So, the control signals are passed on along with the values also ok which are you required for the greater state. Now, they are categorized as a different things like ok. Fine. Now, we thought ok having more stages in the pipeline helps a lot it improves the performance uh, the clock rate of the processor can be improved. Um, it is not that having more stages in the pipeline is all good ok. There are some issues associated with that which needs to be handled. So, they are called pipeline hazards. Let us see what are they. This is a phenomenon that disturbs the smooth execution of a pipeline, ok. Something which disturbs the smooth flow of instruction into the pipeline is called a pipeline hazard. Let us see what they are. 
let me give you a, an uh, no, example where assume say okay, it is not true with arm um, 7 or 9, but assume that there is a unified cache with a single read code ok. That means unified cache what I mean by the both instruction and data are accessed from the same cache and it has got only single read code that means when the processor wants to access an instruction or a data assuming that they are already available in the cache now it will be reading from the cache rather than from the memory. Now because of the restriction or the limitation that this particular cache has only a single read code it cannot read an instruction as well as a data in the same cycle. Now you may wonder how when is it occurred that these two needs to be done in the same cycle. It is possible because if you remember in a pipeline case different instructions are at the different stages of the pipeline. So, there may be an instruction which needs a data ok which is in the ID stage instruction decode stage where according to our arm processing the ID stage that is the accessing of data uh, or the upcode. So, we just to access the I am sorry it need not be registered we can say that because it is coming to the data cache it has to be a accessing of memory. So, it is accessing some data from the memory which is in the uh, fourth stage of the pipeline. So, that data needs to be accessed and during that cycle itself some other you know later instruction or is switching an instruction from the pipe you no know, from the memory. So, they both will be trying to access the cache at the same slot. So, because of that there will be a hazard. So, it cannot be done together. So, we one of the things needs to be uh, stopped and then we have to wait for the one of the reads to be done either instruction or data and then the next class has to start the execution. Uh, so, the pipeline bubble which I explained in the three stage pipeline will happen. Now, dependence because of and the hazards. Now, what I am saying is there can be a data dependency between two instructions which may cause a hazard. Let us see how it can happen. So, in a program you have set of instructions and normally when we are operating on a set of register contents they all be related to each other because we add two values and then the next instruction uses the result of that and then carries forward to another operation or it stores into the memory or you know recovers from the memory whatever it is. So, there will be a, a dependency between two instructions which are coming one after the other. So, this if two instructions are data dependent they cannot exhibit simultaneously. What I mean by that is it will be clear as we go forward I will give you an example and then explain you that. So, if two instructions depend on each other that means the later instruction is waiting for the result to be available from the previous instruction that means it has to wait for the previous instruction to get completed before the next instruction can start accessing the parameter or operand. So, the dependency may be because of the uh, register operand or it could be from memory also because uh, earlier instruction has to write some result into the memory and then that needs to be written by the, read by the next instruction then it has to be dependent on each other. So, this kind of data dependence between two instructions also can cause hazard. Now, there are basically three types of pipeline hazards. One is data hazard, that means an instruction may require an operand that will be the result of a preceding still uncompleted instruction. What I mean by uncompleted? The previous instruction is still not written the result back into the register, the write back stage has not been done. So, the instructions are following one after the other within a clock delay right. So, when the previous instruction is in the uh, execute stage the next instruction comes in the decode stage where the operand is required, but now you cannot get that operand until the previous instruction writes the result back into the register. So, this is called the data hazard. Structural hazard there can be a same resource which I show you know uh, gave you an example in, in the sense of a unified cache. Uh, it could be a limitation on the register code also could cause a resource conflict because of that there will be a stall in the pipeline. Now, one second. Okay. Now one more hazard is right, called control hazard. This is because if there is a jump or a branch to another address then 
now the flow is disturbed you now the program is not accessing the instructions in the sequence whereas the pipeline always accesses the instructions in the same sequence because it keeps incrementing like so and then keep on into, you know accessing the instruction and put it in the pipeline now suddenly a branch instruction has come into the pipeline and says that oh i need to now access instructions from some other memory now what happens the instructions so far have been accessed from the sequential address needs to be abandoned and a new instruction has to be fetched from the new location so because of that there will be a uh pipeline hazard so when i say pipeline hazard it actually introduces some bubbles in the pipeline it's not that it is blowing up the pipeline but actually it introduces some delays that means the pipeline cannot give you a throughput of you no know, five instructions per clock in an ideal case in a five stage pipeline you need to get a five instruction get completed in uh, every clock okay um but um what happened is you know uh, you, you know effectively you should get a one instruction coming out of every clock or one clock right that will not happen so it will get delayed okay so common solution is to start the pipeline which is called bubble now there are some uh, hardware features supported by the processors to avoid these bubbles in the pipeline let us see how it is implemented with an example okay now true data dependency is where one instruction depends on the final outcome of a previous instruction okay this is called a flow dependency or a write read dependency that means the, pre the previous instruction has to write the result into a register and the next instruction is supposed to read from the register so until the previous instruction writes the next instruction cannot read from the result from the register okay so that is called a a flow dependency take an example here now add r1 comma r2 comma r3 what does it mean r1 is equal to r2 plus r3 now what is this move that okay um it should have been a, a sub or any other operation arithmetic operation actually i am showing it as a add r2 thing plus r1 so sorry for this this should have been add so add r4 comma r5 comma r1 suppose two add instructions come one after the other now what happens is this operand which is required for this add instruction so we did a add has to come from this so until this addition is done and the result is written back into r1 this cannot proceed forward okay so this is called a two data dependency second instruction can be fetched the second instruction can be fetched this add instruction can be fetched but it cannot proceed further until this previous add is completed okay so this is for a two data dependency now take an example of add and a mul in okay um it's a typical i'm not talking about a particular uh, any particular arm um, processor or anything you assume that there are two instructions which are in mul and r2 has to be written by this instruction for this to take a value from r2 and then do the operation now what happens is as per our decode stages in you know instruction decode is reading the operands also in this stage so effectively in this cycle itself this instruction needs r2 to be available but let's go back okay in this stage only execution is done for the app it has computed the value but still it has not written back that value into r2 because it is going to it has to wait till the write back result then r2 will be written so if suppose this instruction tries to read whatever is the value of r2 in this clock it will be the old value it won't get the latest value which is supposed to be coming from the write back stage of this previous instruction so because of this this instruction cannot proceed further so there will be some hardware security in the uh, in the pipeline to recognize that there is a dependency in the register operand values so it will stall this instruction it won't proceed further okay it won't be like executed like this it will be stall till this clock is done and then after this writing back it will be done it will be reading this and then it will proceed further or the processor needs to support some way of passing on this value to you know at appropriate stage so that this pipeline this instruction can proceed further without any delay let us see how it is handled in the processor this is another example where a store instruction okay 
if you remember store is something to do with memory now what is it doing it is reading from the uh, value okay uh, into r7 and uh, uh, no r1 r2 needs to be um, accessed and then that operand needs to be taken for add up okay now if if r1 r2 needs to be accessed using the actually no this is a load no it could be load instruction where you will be loading the values from memory to a register and um, this needs to be load register and then these parameters have to be read by the adding instruction so this won't be ready until the register values are accessed from the memory so because of that there is a delay here and uh, in this case r3 is written into by add and then that is being used by this instruction now so this is also be dependent on this value so because of this this dependency needs to be avoided or it should be this instruction needs to be stalled for this to operate properly okay now how is it handled this is handled by way of data follow i tell you what is that take an example here add instruction takes the values of r1 and r2 here and it executes the addition and the result is available now but what i told you is through the pipeline register these values are passed on from one stage to the other stage and finally it gets written into r2 in this stage and then r2 needs to be accessed here now if suppose hardware sub the processor supports the way of forwarding the result ahead of writing into the register file because you know that after this execution is done within this clock cycle you have the result available out of ailu now if there is a way this output ailu can be given to this stage so that you know this value is copied from the register file and then kept in the pipeline register for the next stage to consume so if this value can be you no know, short circuited before they write get written into the register file this r2 value is you know, given to this stage actually there is no need of introducing hook okay this concept is called forwarding this is different from the pipeline register which pass on the information from one stage one stage to other stage that is a usual uh, flow of information from one stage to the other apart from that between two stages between two instruction flow there is a information ha flow happening across them based on the type of operand which are used by the different instruction this is called data forwarding that means once the data is available we know that at this stage the addition is performed only thing is it has to wait for two clock cycles to be written into the register file for this instruction to accept so you may have a delay of two clock cycles instead of doing that if the hardware can recognize that there is a dependency between the you know this instruction and this instruction and it is actually waiting for the result of this instruction if it could be passed on but from this stage to there the next instruction which is in the previous stage then this uh, this instruction can proceed without any delay so is the correctness of the program is also of course yes because between this the value what it has got is correct only thing is it gets returned into the register later that doesn't matter because you have got the correct value for this addition to be performed okay so effectively the program correctness is assured and there are no bubbles introduced in the uh, pipeline because of which the performance and the effectiveness of the pipeline is um better here so but it needs some additional security and additional support from the hardware which is supported in arm so arm arm line also support this data flow which i show you with the uh, when we see the data flow uh, of the arm line in the in the discussion okay now as we end the arm section so r1 to r2 load we are doing a loading of the value which is pointed by r1 from the memory into r2 register and which is required for the add add operation now recall 
when actually the memory gets active. It gets the computation of result happens here for the load. Here it is a simple case where there is no indexing or anything, but typically one cycle is used for computing the this cycle is used for computing the address and this cycle is used for accessing the memory. Now what happens in the end of mem cycle only the value will be available inside the processor, but it is still not written into the right, uh, register file which happens only here, but at least the value will be available here. So in case if you want this instruction to be um, run without any delay it is not possible because when this this is not same clock cycle right. We need parameters here for this add to proceed to the next stage, but we do not have the value because it is only address is computed here and we do not know what is stored in that value address. So, we have to introduce one bubble here and if data forwarding is there if this value will would have come into the processor from the memory in this clock cycle so that can be fit fed to this ID stage and it can proceed. So, with the one bubble in of when introducing one bubble this instruction can proceed, but it cannot proceed without any delay. We cannot feed anything from here because earlier when we saw add the result was available. So, the parameter could be could have been often could have been passed on to the next instruction. Whereas, here we are accessing it from the memory which is not available in this cycle. It will be available only at the end of this cycle and it will be written into the R2 in this cycle. So, we have to wait for a cycle at least to get the value by forwarding this value into this and then proceed this instruction here. So, what I am trying to show here is that it is not that forwarding can solve all the problems. It can solve some problems where the operands are coming from the register, but if it has to come from memory it has to wait for one clock. Now, another example. So, by introducing this bubble we are trying to get that value the same example here with the solution. So, we are accessing the value from the memory state and then passing on. So, data forwarding is helpful here ok, but if data forwarding was not supported then we have to wait for the write back to happen and then read the same value from the register. So, so even you have to waste one more cycle in this case, but here anyway it is only one bubble gets set in the loop ok. Now, just a what are needs to be kept in you know as a assembly programmer you may be writing a code for ARM 7 and then needs to be ported on to ARM 9. There are some subtle differences between these two because of the differences in which the, the way the operands are being fetched in the third three stage and five stage take Now, assuming that instruction 2 is a data dependent on a load instruction which I have shown you previously LDR instruction 1, then instruction 2 has to be stalled I told you that it is at least up to the mem stage ok. Even when forwarding is implemented from a mem block to index data one bubble access that can actually be removed. The only way to avoid this stall is to encourage a compiler ok, how do you avoid this? If suppose a compiler is aware because it is it knows what are the instructions whether is there any dependency between this. So, it can introduce another instruction without disturbing the flow of the program, without disturbing the correctness of the program, it can put the instruction instead of the instruction which depends on the previous name uh, the LDR uh, instruction, if it can put some other instruction which can be executed without any dependency then you can avoid it. So, that needs to be done by the compiler by introducing some instruction which is not dependent on each other. Now, because this problem does not happen in three stages I think because computing computing the address as well as accessing the parameter uh, value and writing it in the register all happen in the execute stage. So, the next instruction coming in will be able to get the parameter very easily because it is only needing the parameter only in the last stage. So, three stage pipeline does not have this kind of dependency, the five stage only has the dependency because in the five stage the parameters or the operands are read in the second stage itself ok, whereas in the three stage the reading the operand and writing the result back everything is happening in the third stage that is the execute stage. So, there will not be any dependency between um, operand being available for the next instruction to proceed ok. So, this is only specific to the five stage ok. 
Now let us see how it is implemented in the pipeline. Now having understood what are the pipeline instruction registers and then data forwarding, you will be in a position to understand this whole diagram. Okay. Now it will it is little or more different than what you are seeing for the ARM7 processor. You have a instruction cache within the processor and the instruction flow through this and you see that there is an address incrementer which is now specifically incrementing only the PC value by 4 and then writing that why is the address going to instruction cache because if the instruction is available in the cache it will be read from here or it will go to the memory and then through cache it the instruction come into the processor. Now after this this is the first stage now whatever you see the gray one they are called instruction they are all pipeline registers which I showed you in between the stages there are pipeline registers which pass on the data as well as control information from one stage to the other stage. These are the registers which are invisible to the programmer but they do a very important job of passing on the information between two different stages. Now if you have noticed between the PG stage and the five stage pipeline. The PC, when it gets executed, you know, if you remember the pre stage pipeline, first there was a, there is a fetch and then there is a decode and then execute. If you remember, I told you that when a particular instruction gets executed in the third stage, that time the PC value is PC plus 12, that means it is accessing the next instruction but one because in during the first stage, stage PC is 1000 suppose and then and the third uh, second stage it will be um, PC plus 4 and uh, when it comes to um, third stage it was it will be PC plus 8. Now that is the way PC is incrementing so PC plus 4 and 8 plus 8 is the instant you know, PC value when an instruction is getting executed in the current execution stage whereas if suppose an instruction in the five stage pipeline is trying to read the PC value, it is going to see PC plus 4 because here the upward access is happening immediately after the fifth stage, it is not happening after the third stage. Okay. During the three stage pipeline, during the third stage only the PC is, is suppose any, you know, any instruction is having a dependency on the register. PC value it will be accessing it from the register file. So, what the ARM processor family as they have done is suppose to uh, keep the similarity between an ARM 7 and ARM 9 family though really the PC is only incremented by 4 they increment it by another 4 and then write into R15. So, so that the program original program which was written for ARM 7 also will work properly on Online. So that is why you see that though the PC is a plus 4, it is implemented by another 4 and written into R15. So, when this instruction comes into this, suppose you have written a code for ARM 7 and you are running it on ARM 9, you will be assuming that or the assembler uh, would have uh, you know assumed that R15 is implemented to plus 10. So, to get the same feel of the value that it expects to have in R15 the PC is incremented by one more core and then it is written into the R15. So, that is why you see this here and then the rest of the thing is happening the same way immediate value is also passed on in case if uh, it has to be shifted across to ALU and then based on the load or store you get the arithmetic address arithmetic pre index or post index this will be understanding it a little more detail when you are talking about addressing mode. But this address computation is happening here because I told you in the execution stage address computation also happens if it is a load or store and then actual access of the load or store happens during the mem cycle and then writing that value back into the register happens in the write back stage. So, if it was a typical ALU operation it comes here the ALU value is computed and then it is passed on through the pipeline register to the register write and then it is written back into this register. So, this is the way the five stage pipeline works. Now, I showed you that there is a forwarding that means 
whatever value you get during the execute stage you feed it back into the instruction that means if you don't wait for the results to be available only after writing into the register it is taken out from here and in the next clock cycle if the there is a you know, dependency on this data for the previous next instruction when the next instruction enters this this data is available so whatever red color i showed you the from the execute stage to the decode stage uh, there is a you know, up and moving in this forwarding happens so that you get the values uh, to the forwarding register here okay so this is all about pipe pipeline now let us see what is the pc behavior i explained to you with the diagram so in the three stage pipeline the pc was different it was pc plus 8 in the three stage whereas in uh, five stage it is only pc plus 4 when the operands are read in the five stage pipeline because of this arm has added m to emulate that arms behavior it is adding the pc value to 8 and then feeding it okay so incremented pc value from the fetch stage is fed directly to the register in the decode stage by passing the pipeline register because pipeline register would have passed only the pc plus 4 but we want pc plus 8 to be in sync with the earlier code so the pc plus 8 is passed on so that when the instruction is accessing the rpc it will get the correct value what it assumes to have in the rpc which is pc plus 8 as per the arm 7 family of processor so this is a little uh, difference in the behavior of a five stage pipeline which is handled by arm now what is the pipeline paradox do you think that pipelining actually makes the instruction to run faster actually not the actually having more stages uh, it takes taking a longer time for the execution to complete one typical example is i told you that because of the five stage pipeline even for an add or a very unknown data processing instruction which doesn't involve any memory has to wait one clock cycle to write back the result that means we are introducing one clock of one uh, delay or uh, no one cycle delay we are introducing because of the pipeline stage so it is in fact increasing the execution time but how do we get a better performance because it increases the throughput the yeah, effectively if you see you get to see five instructions now every clock cycle one instruction comes out from the pipeline okay there is k times five times faster performance you get when you split that uh, operation into multiple stages and then execute them so you get a throughput improvement but we are not executing the instruction faster than the normal execution with the pipeline uh, processor okay so what is the arm processor uh, and the pipelining how this isa of arm supports pipelining effectively because they all instructions are typically pretty long and uh, fetching them is easier and decoding them is easier because the uh, operand fields are in a fixed location so decoding is simpler and then we have a register to register architecture for arithmetic operation so the alu or you know arithmetic operation in the execute stage can be completed in one cycle we including the barrel shifter operation so there is no delay because of memory because we have removed all the data processing instruction using memory as an another operand so only it, all the data processing instructions use only registers as operand so there is no delay because of memory whereas this processor allows data processing instructions also to have memory operand that is directly accessing the operand from memory because of which there will be a delay and this processor also have variable length instruction length uh, instructions because of which the decoding logic is complex so so if you remember that tau value uh, of you know how much time it takes for a particular uh, stage to complete will be more because of this you have to give the same time for all the stages so your pipeline also becomes slower the whole pipeline becomes slower slower if one of the stages in the pipeline takes more time so because of this implementing a five stage or more stages in the pipeline is easier for this compared to this so this is the you know analogy you know how an instruction set architecture affects the pipeline 
and what is the relationship? Why, why is it easier for implementing a pipe planning in this process? That is what I am trying to explain here. Okay. So, we have come to an end of this class uh, where we understood what is the five stage pipeline and the various stages of the pipeline and then how the five stage pipeline is organized internally in the ARM and how the data forwarding from the different stages help in completing the instruction without the introducing more bubbles into the pipeline. So, we understood also what are the pipeline methods and how it is solved using the hardware. So, thank you very much for your attention and this brings down you know brings the end of our unit 2 and uh, we will be starting with instruction set of ARM 7 from the next session. Thank you very much for your attention have a nice day thank you bye bye.